we've already seen that we can characterize the transient response of a differential equation by looking at the location of the poles of the system on the complex plane. And what we found was that if the real part of any one of the poles is positive, the system will have an unstable response. If it's negative, it'll have a decaying response. One measure that's commonly used to describe how fast systems decay is called the settling time. Settling time is the time required for the transient response to reach 98% of its final value. Note, this is different for every text. It's typically something in the high to mid 90s. I'm using 98%. Your actual text, I think, uses a slightly different value. This is the same as saying that the transient response has decayed to 2% of its initial value. Remember that the transient response decay comes from the factor e to the lambda t. So I want to know when does this become 2%, 0.02? Well, that happens when lambda t is equal to minus 4. So if we set lambda t is equal to minus 4, we can say that t settle is equal to minus 4 over lambda. Remember that lambda will be less than 0, which means that t settling time will be a positive number. We can also use this in reverse. We say, well, what must the root of a characteristic system be in order for it to have a desired settling time? So if we just solve this the other way, we would say that lambda must be equal to minus 4 over t settling just some useful numbers here. If lambda is equal to minus 4, t settling is 1 second. If lambda is equal to minus 1, t settling is 4 seconds. Quick example, given the differential equation x dot plus 3x is equal to f of t, how can I characterize the transient response of that system? Well, I do that by finding the roots of the characteristic equation. That's lambda plus 3 is equal to 0, or lambda is equal to minus 3. Because the root is less than 0, it lies in the left half side of the complex plane, thus the system is stable, it decays, and the decay rate, ETS, is equal to minus 4 over minus 3, 1.3 seconds for this system to decay. If you were to solve this system and plot the results for f of t is equal to 1, you'd find that the system looks something like this, where this is 1 here, and this is 1 here, in seconds. So given this differential equation where the forcing function is 1, you find that the system grows to approximately one-third and it takes it about 1.3 seconds to do that. Because the system is linear, even if you change this input, you will still find that the response does something and it reaches a steady state value at 1.3 seconds. If we change this to 2, the system is twice as big, but it still takes approximately 1.3 seconds to reach its final value.